Huawei Watch GT3. This is again the watch everyone is gonna try to beat in 2022. Are the two week long battery life, phone calls, external HR tracker support, and installing extra apps enough to convince you getting one? Let's inspect. Hey, welcome back, really nice to meet you. My name is Michael and what we do here on the channel is to inspect fresh and cool tech like this. You know, the Huawei Watch. Okay, I'll take it off. <laughs> the Huawei Watch GT3, uh, something that I know a lot of you have been eagerly expecting to be reviewed on the channel. And of course I took my time because I wanted to verify everything and have really long enough uh, friendship or relationship with this body so that I can really tell you my honest opinion based on long enough usage. Uh, a disclaimer, I have never been in touch with Huawei's global marketing and usually my Huawei devices are something I purchase on my own because I really enjoy their wearables and it's true that the GT series offering this great balance between performance, um, health tracking features and price is among the most tempting and we can still notice that Huawei also had some challenges with the hardware manufacturing this year because my purchase got delayed like three times and I eventually got it from another location. But never really mind. It's interesting to see if this excellent looking at the first sight hardware has a good synergy with the software and all the limitations that Huawei are suffering from in the past few years. Starting at $250, this is a little more asked than for the predecessing generations and the series are primarily available in Europe, South America, Asia and Africa, with the US market being blocked for Huawei since years. There's a pro version with a lot more attractive and premium design and materials, however the features are about the same. In terms of competition, a Macefit GT3 Pro is waiting in the other corner for a battle, or devices like OnePlus Watch and similar, fitness tracking and great battery life oriented. As for smartness, we'll see if it can finally get a bit closer to Wear OS or Watch OS by Apple. Unboxing. In late 2019, I've done the same with the GT2, and two years later, taking out the third generation is bringing the same good feeling. Huawei's boxes have always been attractive. Nothing but premium feeling. Here's the watch. Such a delight to have it. Visually resembles the second generation. Notice the crown on the side though. The back looks similar to what we know from Huawei Watch 3 series, which were released back in the summer. A charger, which is a wireless one. And the strap, which looks rather boring. Same old, same old. There are two case sizes, by the way, 42 and 46 mm, with the latter one being inspected right now. And this on the side, as you can see, is a curved glass. If you need more detailed specs, here are some for you related to the 46 mm unit. The 1.43 inch AMOLED touchscreen, which is powered by ARM Cortex M processor, 32 MB RAM, 4 GB storage, a speaker, a microphone, GPS, barometer, SPO2 sensor, temperature sensor, advanced HR sensor, so a lot of them, and all of it is managed and utilized by the homegrown Harmony OS software. Compared to the predecessing generations, there are two major differences. The first one is very obvious, that's the rotating crown, which is great for scrolling up and down apps or notifications whatsoever. Also, here we do have a temperature sensor, which can read the temperature from your wrist skin. And... Um, not really sure, it's, it's definitely not the same as reading the temperature from the forehead, which most doctors would anyways prefer. The other thing, there's an improvement on the CPU inside, and it's a lot better responding to swipes. You know, many people have been criticizing Huawei watches for kind of slow scrolling. Now it gets closer to being premium. But if you plan to upgrade to GT3 just because of the hardware, I'm not really sure all the reasons are in place. For instance, there is no NFC for contactless payments, there is no Wi-Fi for quickly downloading apps or uh, updates, and there is no LTE-capable version, which the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 provides at a budget of close to $280. So, kind of interesting move from Huawei to keep the watch at the same price. Let's get to use it, shall we? Fits really well on the wrist, weight is just about right, size as well. It's not that big, but enough to be noticed. 
Navigation is smooth and easy. Swiping is of course the key. Left and right axis is the main cards. Each one of them looks really beautiful on the stunning display with high resolution. Swipe down and these are the quick toggles. Very useful, but I wish they were configurable so that I can place a quick link for the torch because I use this feature a lot and it takes some time to access from the app launcher. Swipe up, here are the notifications, but without the option to respond and the queue is sometimes a little weird. The good news is that inside the app there are some signs about possible integration of pre-configured answers, which if really happens, I'll be really happy about. The app drawer is well familiar. You're going to hardly find significant differences between this lightweight system on a chip and the regular Huawei Watch 3 series. This is a much more slim-lined build of Harmony OS, therefore supports less features, but given the hardware abilities, they seem to be about right. There are a bunch of useful apps, most of them are anyways present with most fitness trackers and smartwatches already. The OS is fluid, with good configuration options, however not yet perfect and that detailed. For instance, while GT1 and GT2 both have the option to schedule the OS on option, here with GT3 this is much more annoying and should you want to disable the feature for the night, you're going to need to go to the settings. Exactly the same as it is with the Huawei Watch 3 that I tested 6 months ago. Generally the OS is good but obviously lacks some deeper customizations. You will notice all the health tracking apps present, which includes the 24-7 HR tracking, 24-7 blood oxygen saturation measuring, even temperature tracking. The HR tracking is surprisingly good, a lot better than the sensor on GT2 Pro, and here Huawei have thought about professional athletes as well, because among the 100 plus sports options, you can actually enable a Bluetooth-based HR tracker like the Polar HR and you can rely on values that you know you can trust. Sadly, there is no ANT Plus protocol supported, but there's a bunch of good chest trackers which are reliable enough and have Bluetooth. Since I mentioned sports, well, the workout section is getting better and better, the amount is huge as it is with most other Huawei devices anyways. This time, you can see that the tiles surrounding each activity are even more and have a stunning design. My favorite one is this, allowing you to navigate back to your starting point. There still is no way to go and follow waypoints, but at least getting a route and following back is an option, just like what you can do with the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro. The other improvement are the apps. There is a Google Maps navigation app. Well, don't get too excited because this only can relay the navigation instructions, however, cannot be used independently from the watch. Similar is the condition of Petal Maps. So in short, this is not a device you can rely on for independent navigation while doing sports. There are a few other cool looking apps, none of them is essential though, still no proper calendar integration, nor Spotify or Shazam are available among the top popular titles from Google Play or App Store. Generally, the availability of these apps only contributes to making the Huawei Watch 3 redundant. I can't really see too many reasons to buy the more expensive model over the regular Watch GT3. Furthermore, a very disturbing fact, the GPS accuracy. You notice how my route is represented as if I'm walking near the street while I'm actually within the borders. It is again way off, in some cases around 5 to 10 meters away from the correct value. And although the approximation for distance in sports seems to be correct, the track is not, which is yet another sports tracking related challenge. The smartphone app also got some really good upgrades and I believe it continues to be one of the best looking smartphone apps for wearable devices designed ever because the user interface feels very beautiful, very functional, fluid, uh, no glitches, scrolling is fantastic, the information is divided into super cool sections and even the logic itself is fantastic. So in terms of user interface, I have no remarks. But when it comes to integration to third-party services, this is where the drama begins. Uh, this smartwatch is targeted towards athletes, runners for instance, and most of the people that do practice this, they very often prefer to sync to Strava, that's a very popular service. Well, unfortunately Strava has never really made it to Huawei Health. There's a workaround, you can download the third party app from Google Play Store, sync the data manually, it's not perfect and I really doubt that too many people are going to use this kind of approach. Also, if you try to integrate to other services, the only available 
uh, you can count on just Adidas running and Komoot, and that's all. Not even Google Fit is available. And this is a rather recent downgrade. Looks like since the end of the summer, Google has terminated this option. Why and how this can be a security breach is not yet clear to me, but so be it. All of this means that unless you are in the Huawei ecosystem, you don't really need third-party apps sync, great. But if you're looking for expandability, you're going to be rather disappointed. Furthermore, Huawei Health app continues to be a struggle for iPhones, with some extra features missing. And since we talk about drawbacks already, to all the software woes, there is no NFC, therefore no payments, no Wi-Fi, no LTE version, no option for responding to texts yet. If I forgot to mention something in the drawbacks list or you have some other ideas, then feel free to contribute in the comment section below the video. And now conclusion time. Um, honestly, I, I still find it hard to recommend the GT3 over the GT2 given the current price points uh, because, well, this year has the rotating crown, it has the ability to connect external HR tracker, you know, it can take a chest mount device and it can measure your temperature from your wrist skin. But let's be honest, how many times did you really think in the past two years that you actually need such features? Because it's true that for close to two years, the hardware upgrade of this series is rather insignificant. And don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed using this watch and probably are going to keep it as a primary watch when I have the chance to choose what I wear uh, in 2022. But we have to be fair that the hardware progress is rather insignificant and there are now too many questions unanswered. What happens with the software? Is Strava ever going to be integrated? Is Google Fit ever going to work properly again? And how about NFC, Wi-Fi and all the rest? I think we have a lot to comment about so feel free to join me in the comment section below the video. Of course as usual if you want to support the channel then please order this device through any of the links which are posted in the description below and I so much hope that this has been useful. Thank you very much for watching this episode until the end and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!